Okay, so a tidal force I'm going to say it's the difference of the force per unit mass due to small differences in the distance from a gravitational object, but I'll just say, yeah, from mass m, and it's a difference in the gravitational force. Okay? So, what do we know? What's our basic principle here? Newton's law of gravitation. Yeah, and it says magnitude of f, because it's just the magnitude we need to worry about, equals big G, big M, little m over r squared, where r is a distance from the big mass, assuming a big mass and a small mass, right? And the force per unit mass little m is f over m equals big G big M over R squared. Okay? Now, the rate at which your force per unit mass changes with respect to your distance, and the distance implicitly being the distance from the big mass, right? Well, what is that? How do you calculate the rate, or the, the, the expression for the rate at which f over m changes with respect to distance? That's a key concept from calculus. It's a derivative of that force per unit mass with respect to what? Time. The radius. I said with respect to distance, right? Oh, yeah. Distance, you're right, you're right. Because right. we don't know how fast this thing's falling or how fast it's approaching, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a derivative with respect to r. Now, that's a connection you need to know how to make. So if that will have a velocity factor, correct? That has nothing to do with velocity. Okay. okay? Um, it's not a position and it's not a time. The rate at which something changes with respect to something else, the instantaneous rate is the derivative. Okay? And that's a concept you absolutely need. And you need to be able to make that connection. First, you need to ask yourself the question, okay? Yeah, it's a difference of gravitational force due to small differences in the distance from the mass, right? Okay? So you want to know the rate at which that force per unit mass changes with respect to your distance from the mass. That's a direct interpretation of what this thing is asking, but it's not one you're sufficiently familiar with, okay? And this is a challenge problem in a challenging text, okay? But if you understand derivatives and rates of change, it's a simple problem, okay? So we're going to keep hammering at this. Um, whole idea, okay? Interpretation of a derivative, the use of a derivative to answer a question of this nature.
any question that involves a change in one quantity due to a change in another puts you immediately in the context of a derivative and a differential. Okay? So, anyhow, that rate, so the rate of change is derivative with respect to R of F over M, right? Which is the derivative with respect to R of big G, big M over R squared, right? And you can do that derivative. I won't even put you on the spot. If you don't know how to do that derivative, you need to do some serious review. I'll probably do it wrong after saying that. Okay? I almost didn't write down the two, so I'm busy talking. Um, so that's it, isn't it? Okay? That's the differential form, okay? And that's what they're asking you to prove. So if you understand what a rate of change is, boom, 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 nothing to it, okay? Then they ask you, you approach that supermassive black hole, do look at that simulation that was just created recently and posted today, okay? Not, not, not a place you would want to approach. You got this black hole at the middle, but you got mass being pulled in, subject to all these forces and so forth, okay? Which accelerates the mass rather rapidly, so it ends up spinning around the black hole at a speed close to that of light, and emitting radiation that will fry you if you get within, you know, a million astronomical units of the thing, okay? I'm just throwing a number off the top of my head. It happens to be close, it's only dumb luck. But, uh, if you did get close enough, this would allow you to calculate the difference in the force between one part of your body and another selected part of your body. Okay? And that would be very inconvenient once those forces got strong enough if the force in this part of your body is 58 tons greater than the force in this part of your body, your body ain't going to hold together. Huh? I believe there's a term for that, and that's called spaghettification. Called what? Spaghettification. Spaghettification, yeah, you get pulled into spaghetti. Yeah. Okay? So, now you ask about a question about orbits. Uh, this is what happened if you're trying to orbit the thing. If you're not getting fried, you're getting pulled apart because the part of you closer is going to experience a greater force, is going to want to orbit at a greater velocity. You kind of flatten instead if you're doing it like... Yeah, you get, you get spaghettified. Uh, you know, the part that goes at a faster velocity gets out in front of the part that's a slower velocity. That hurts uh, for a while, but pretty soon you're, you're dead. Uh, and you'd be dead if you were that close anyway. So it's not really something you got to worry about. You just worry about getting burned up when you get close. 